UFC 238 has a lot of interesting fights on it, and particularly in that main card. We're going to get to all of them here on today's show. I actually want to focus on one of the prelim fights. Tatiana Suarez taking on Nina Ansaroff. It headlines the ESPN portion of that card. And if you just begin to connect the dots and look around a little bit, there is organic interest in her, and the UFC is getting behind her. Here's what I mean. Naturally, it doesn't take a genius to look at her fighting style and her win record and her abilities and say, huh, she might be a title contender one day. Everybody got that. But more than that, you're beginning to see other outlets pick up on it. Now, Brendan Schaub did uh, his food truck diaries. Now, that's not necessarily like the indication that stardom is upon her, but he doesn't do that for fighters uh, that he doesn't believe in or doesn't care about or that other people don't care about. Uh, and I think you saw, if you watched that, there was a lot of positive response to it. People are interested in her. On top of that, the UFC is clearly getting behind her in a lot of different ways. Number one, she got her own media, uh, LA Media Scrum. Remember, she's going to Media Day today in Chicago. Before that, she got her own media scrum. You know who else got a media scrum? Henry Cejudo, who by the time Saturday rolls around might become a two-division champion. They gave her one. Think about that for a second. She's on the prelims, and they gave her one. That is unusual. Then today I saw that either Body Armor is sponsoring her or there is at least some kind of short-term sponsorship with them. It's certainly a partnership she's doing with Body Armor. That doesn't happen unless the UFC gives their blessing, number one, just to be clear about that. So you're just beginning to see people are picking up on not only is the fact that she's good, she might become very good, she might become champion, and she might be become some kind of a marketable star. Now, the question is, could she be the next Ronda Rousey? And look, the question is in many ways unfair. Ronda Rousey was sort of like catching lightning in a bottle. It was right when they brought over women to the UFC, and she was outspoken. Um, She had, look, what's the euphemism for marketable? Being physically attractive. She had some of that uh, as well. She had an incredible style. She had an Olympic background. That's just a really unique mix that a lot of people aren't going to be able to reproduce and by virtue of their own individual talents and also the context in which they're competing. Women are much more established now, so that's different for Tatiana Suarez. If you follow her on social media, you kind of get the sense that she like loves animals and is a bit of a goofball, but isn't out, which I say positively, but isn't the kind of outspoken, brash, in-your-face figure that, at least verbally, that Ronda Rousey was. So that's different. Competing in a different weight class, that's different. But, but history doesn't have to be exactly repeating itself. It just has to rhyme. Here you have somebody coming in, dominating. If you look at any picture she posts, there are tons of thirsty fuckboys in the comments. So check off the marketable slash physically attractive thing for whatever that is worth. And I like to live in a world where that wasn't a calculus in how women become stars in the sport. But let's be honest, it absolutely is. So there's that. Then on top of it, you have another consideration. Namely, she doesn't have exactly the Olympic background, but she was destined for it. She certainly has an international, internationally competitive background. And then she has a bit of her own twist, which was dealing and then beating, dealing with, excuse me, and then beating cancer, which she talks about openly, creates for an incredible story, creates for a bit of a comeback, finding the second chapter in her career. Henry Cejudo was noting she was the one who was beating eventual gold medalist, Hel- uh, uh, gold medalist Helen Marulis from Rockville, Maryland here. So she was on that path, got a little bit derailed, but there are some things you can see that begin to rhyme a little bit here. Now, as I mentioned before, if Nina Ansaroff goes in there and wins, all bets are off. And as I indicated before, just because she's on the prelims, doesn't mean that you can just dismiss this. While there are tons of of things that could go wrong if you're believing in Tatiana as the next big thing, limited to, or including but not limited to, um, Nina winning, there's also uh, that, you know, what if she has a style that people just don't enjoy over time or, you know, they they grow sour on it or something like that. Uh, there's, there's there's lots of different things that could get in the way here. But, as I mentioned, UFC gave her a media tour. Uh, they agreed to this body armor thing. Plus, con- consider her position on this card. It's on ESPN. It's headlined the ESPN prelims. So she's going to be getting maximum exposure for the audience, at least in terms of the people who are 
on cable. Um, and just because she's there doesn't it does make it categorically different, right? It's not on the main card. Doesn't mean that the other fights on the main card are categorically better. Your mileage may vary, but that does that's not what being on the main card means anymore. Like they're trying to get out there and let folks know who she is. They're trying to promote her. They're trying to get sponsors behind her. They're trying to get the media involved in her. Folks, they don't do this unless they get that spidey sense. I have said this a million times. Talent recruitment and identification is very hard to do. Nina Ansaroff could spoil everybody's plans. And by the way, if you haven't been paying attention to what she's been doing recently, she's been looking pretty dang good as a competitor herself. So don't. Don't be confused that this is some walk in the park for her. But if Tatiana wins, and she wins in the way that she's been winning, she'll be your easy contender for a fight with Jessica Andrade. I like her chances against Jessica Andrade. She's only, what, seven, eight fights into her career, uh, Tatiana Suarez? And she already has greatness written all over her. At least we think right now. So just look at the star potential here. She seems likable. She has an incredible athletic background. She has the story of triumph over this deadly disease. She has this Habib-like fight style, right? Calling her the Habib Nurmagomedov of the women's divisions, which she has fully accepted and almost adopted. And she has an undefeated record. And by the way, it's not just that she's winning or winning impressively. Like physically, she appears to be on a different level than the rest of these competitors. A lot of these other competitors are like 60-40 fighter athlete. I don't know exactly what the spread is with her, but her athletic uh, bona fides are way above everybody else in that division, it appears. Jessica Andrade is strong. I don't know if she's the athlete that Tatiana Suarez is. Like... We're going to talk about this later, but if you imagined a world where pick any name on the card and they win, what would that do for them? Think about that scenario. What would a win here do for Tatiana Suarez? Dude, it would guarantee her a title shot, it seems to me. And two, it might put the marketing efforts in overdrive. And three, dude, she could become the next women's star in MMA. You've got Cyborg, who it's hard to know exactly how much longer she has left and what kind of fight she's going to be doing. Amanda Nunes, you know, she beat all the best ones and not sure how much of a rub she got, but she doesn't want to be around too much longer. Rose was a budding star, and she lost. Now you got Valentina Shevchenko on this card. She has some star potential as well. Um, you want to get has lost several times in a row now. There is a bit of an opening. There's a bit of an opening for someone to step into that void, not merely as a winner, but as a dominant figure with an interesting story and athletic credentials that people can just sort of trust and identify with. As I mentioned, I'm going to keep saying it. MMA is unpredictable. Talent identification is hard. Even organizations in sports that spend millions of dollars doing it, they get it wrong all the time. They get it wrong all the time. I could be getting this wrong. I take Nina Ansaroff very seriously. However, I do not think it is crazy to look at this fight, look at this card, look at what she has done, and say to yourself, ooh, we're on the precipice of something here. Something something big is about to happen here. Could happen anyway. So my question for you guys is, do you think the UFC wants... Tatiana Suarez, not to be identical to Ronda Rousey. Nobody really can be, in part because you can't save time in a bottle and the conditions under which she entered the UFC under. Those are gone. So in in that sense, the comparison falls apart right away. But in other meaningful ways, as I mentioned, athletic background, hell of a story, right? Ronda uh, talked about the suicide of her father. Here you have a story about cancer. So you got the athletic bona fides. You got the story in the background. You got somebody that can be marketable, for lack of a better description. And you got somebody that is absolutely dominating her peers. And she's doing it in the best and toughest division 
in women's MMA, certainly inside the UFC. I, I, I think that they are, they, again, I don't know if they're saying in board meetings, ooh, how do we find the next Ronda? But in learning the lessons about how certain fighters, particularly on the women's side, become popular, I bet they see some potential here. I bet they absolutely do. I bet they see some of the same, again, some of the same things they can bring to life here. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. Subscribe to the channel. There's other videos you can watch right here. If you've never heard my Sirius XM radio show, there's a link in the description box below. You can try it for free for 30 days. The Luke Thomas Show airs weekdays, 3 to 6 p.m. Eastern on Sirius XM Fight Nation, channel 93. Catch y'all next time.